Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 11 of RP the Beast Neotech series. Today we're going to work on doing some distillation with modern industrialization. Now currently the way we're doing distillation for oil is obviously with pneumatic craft and our distilleries and the refinery outputs and these guys here. However, I can now refine this crude oil in a much better way and I can start getting rid of, well, this entire setup for ethanol because this guy here is not efficient. We'll have a much better way to make ethanol in a few hours, hopefully here. However, this setup for ethanol is not the be-all and all solution. This guy here probably won't change much. It'll probably stay relatively relatively the same, I assume. Over here, I have a lot of ores going on still, just from having many, many, many steel drills. I had many, many bronze drills, and that is just EMC duplication. Very easy. And these guys have just been running for a long time. I've also gone ahead and set up battery alloy on demand to have, well, 24,000 in 24.5 thousand permanently stocked, which is really nice. Another thing we went ahead and did is set up Petra the Villager over here. I said I wasn't going to do this, but I went ahead and did it. So Petra the Villager here is set up to auto trade emeralds just with an exporter, and then he automatically get pulled out with this hopper, and then it's imported. I'm pretty sure I could just import directly underneath, but I just put the buffer there in case for some reason. I don't know why. Other thing we did is we actually went ahead and went back to the end dimension, and this was mainly because I wanted to find myself in Elytra, and we found a density, which is really nice found some other cool loot uh, such as the tempad now if you've never used a tempad before this guy allows you to set a destination and then just teleport to it you can also throw it in your curio slot i am so happy i found one because the recipe for the tempad itself is an ev recipe so i'm glad i found the loot tempad in a chest it was super super lucky and we also got our elytra now with the elytra we obviously upgraded our tier 4 jet boots which allows us to have creative flight, meaning no hover fall. And also with builders mode on, we pretty much have creative flight at all times with our armor set. And the last thing we went ahead and did was make some annealed copper. Now this guy is very simple. You just need to combine oxygen and copper dust in your electric blast furnace at a canthal tier. And this was very simple. We had a bunch of oxygen from doing our setup downstairs in our basement. We are mostly avoiding the oxygen. I just threw a bunch of tanks and then threw it on the back with auto import and then threw copper dust in the input hatch through the auction in a fluid input hatch which we added and then we got ourselves a bunch of hot and yield copper which we threw in the vacuum freezer and then obviously we turned into wires to make advanced pumps and and then with those wires we made some advanced motors and advanced pumps and that allowed us to make our first stainless steel drill which will be used in today's episode we needed both the pump and the motor to make one and the rest of the ingredients we already had so we made some stainless steel drills threw them in the emc generator now and now we have 6600 of them so we have plenty of stainless steel drills because both of these guys will be used for in the electric quarry and in the oil drilling rig today we're going to be focused on oil drilling only next episode we will be doing the quarry and processing of all of these ores because some of them have unique processing lines but for today we're going to worry about oil drilling only so the first thing we obviously need is a new oil drilling rig now these guys are pretty easy to make at this point in our game we're pretty far advanced so with no issue we can make one of these i'll just do one for now they're pretty efficient once they get running so i'm not too worried about shale oil running out anytime soon now if we check this we need 38 machine casings six pipes and 18 chains how many machine casings do i have i have 64 plenty of enough already now we're going to run this guy at medium voltage it only requires 32 eu per tick and our base is pretty much fully medium voltage outside of a few machines now over here we have our hv transformer obviously for the electrolyzer the centrifuge and electric mixer and then i also added this off camera an hv energy hatch right here so this guy can run at pretty high efficiency rates i have the mv and hv still both on it and then obviously these guys only have so much throughput so it's not like it's actually using all of our energy we're overproducing energy we just can't transfer it fast enough nevertheless we're gonna run that guy at hv so we do need the mv energy hatch and it produces four thousand millibucks of oil so a steel fluid output hat should be enough for this guy and then we're going to just use a huge fluid tank for the buffer and then we're going to export it with some some fluid pipes and this is just so we can have a decent enough buffer down below now this guy here is pretty easy to make you just need small fluid tanks into medium fluid tanks oh 
Do I not have the small? Oh, did I already make mediums? Now this guy's pretty simple to make. You just need each tier fluid tank, but I'm pretty sure all the rest is broken. So I'll grab one of our huge fluid tanks. And then all we need to do is set up an oil drilling rig for this guy. And you can actually stack more than one of these on top of each other just by using a wrench. And I believe we have a pneumatic wrench here. Yeah, we have a few of them. And obviously this guy will start to get pressurized thanks to our thing. Oh, we also need electrum cables. Another thing I probably should do today is make a wireless ME setup. And I don't know how expensive these are. I haven't checked. I assumed they were very expensive. Oh, this isn't expensive at all. Okay, you know what we're going to do? Small, small side note. Pneumatic craft advanced charge wrench. Wow, what a cool achievement. Anyway. Anyways, I want my Fluix dust. Make myself some Fluix pearls. Might go two wireless receivers, I assume. A wireless access point. And then I should just be able to check that right on here. Yep, perfect. And then we'll make a wireless crafting terminal. Oh, it requires a bunch of fluid access. Okay. Oh, yes. I was making magnetic steel rods, which requires neodymium. And if you remember, you get tiny neodymium dust at a chance when centrifuging redstone into ruby dust, which you need to make chromium, obviously. However, later down the line, you will get neodymium when you process monzonite. Monzonite is an ore you specifically get from the stainless steel quarry. Once again, something we'll be doing next, something we'll be doing next episode. You also get a few more byproducts that we will need for the HV to EVH transformation. However, I will let those guys charge because I don't believe, yeah, charge swords, Certus Quartz does not have an EMC value. So we'll just have to chuck a bunch in here and let that go. And then we'll make a bunch of loose crystals and then we can make our ME terminal or wireless terminal, sorry. So apparently I've never held a bucket of lava, but that's cool. Anyways, I got myself an automatic trash can here and this is mainly so we can use our mixer over here. And if you just right click or left click on an input that you do no longer want or an output you no longer want this guy will automatically void it so that is super cool instead of having to use a thousand buckets to get something un unnecessary out or use a tank that can only be used once or try to it's or breaking it it's a mess however this guy allows you to do it very simply i want to turn off my tool and that should make this plenty of fluke quartz nice and that's one dead energy cell and then obviously this guy will craft or sorry charge automatically thanks to our both pocket generator both our pocket generator and our aerial interface down below however oh i gotta throw it in here there we go now we have wireless access and I will need some wireless upgrades, which are pretty easy to make. I've already gone ahead and started making ender dust right here in our macerator. Then yeah, it's just these guys. That uses 98 FE per tick. Are you dying? Yes, you're dying. Okay, we can't do that. You're no longer dying. Okay, we got to fix the power on our ME controller to say the least. How many can I get away with? You're good. 52 meters isn't bad. I should be able to go down to the basement and use it. Yep, that's really all that matters as long as I can use it while I'm down here because now we can craft on the go. So I don't actually need to be down here. The first place I need to be Oh, I want to build this one back on. It is over here beside our quarry. Now I want to shift right click with this guy and change the x ray off. I want hammer to be five by five and then turn it on and. Oh, those are cables, right? I was like, why is it a break? It? That would make sense. Is that how deep I went with this guy? Yes, I believe so. Oh no, he went, eh, it doesn't really matter. Oh, we also need item input hatch. See, this is why we bring this thing. So we'll do energy, fluid output, and energy right there. That should be a valid structure. No. Oh, you know what? I completely fumbled. It has to go down one more block. Now you're a valid quarry. Perfect. So we'll grab some stainless steel drills. I will grab myself a chest. Ooh, a storing three chests. I wonder what this looks like. Auto pull. Ooh, not bad. It's pretty much a double chest in itself. I gotta put this in a better spot. I want to do something like that. So obviously I want fluid output to automatically go. We'll do a 2000 bucket storage, connect all those tanks. I wonder if I can configure these to connect. Oh, I can. Okay. We didn't need that pneumatic wrench. I didn't think we would, but it was a just through the Antico type situation. It was just a just in case. But this guy should have power and it is going. So we should get our first bucket of shale oil or sorry, four, first 4,000 bucket, four buckets of shale oil. There we go. Nice. So that should be a quest. Oh no, it requires a distillation tower first. And then these guys are all just check marks. Yeah, you don't actually need to hold the buckets of them or turn them in, which is nice. It just is basically a bounty progression, not so much a, oh, do exactly this as I'm telling you. However, that does mean we do have shale oil now and we do have to make our next thing. And that will be our new distillation tower. So I don't really have much room for it down here. I'm going to be honest because I kind of want to keep this line always up and available. Like I'm never going to destroy this, even though it's not the most efficient way to get ethanol obviously there's no reason to destroy it because then we're going to have to lose all that diesel the other three tanks aren't that big of a deal like this guy has a bit of sulfuric acid but we'll get that all back Ooh, this needs to get a reload because yeah these aren't working and a reload should fill them all up instantly yep there we go nice love cube js 
downstairs. But anyways, yeah, I think we'll do this one genuinely outside because this one's a lot cleaner and a lot easier to manage. So I'll probably expand the concrete or the, I guess the stone out a lot more in, a, in the future. However, this guy will look a lot better outside as these are proper multi-blocks and not so much the mess of a design I had last time. So the first thing we need are some distillation towers. Now I've already gone ahead and made these, or sorry, I've got them made in the distilleries. I only need the two for right now. So we'll go ahead and make two, two distillation towers, sorry, which means I need some more advanced pumps. I thought I made all the stainless steel required things, but apparently I didn't. I need some more rods and curved plates. And while I'm at it, I'll make some more rings and bolts. And then we'll back once those are done. And then we can go ahead and make another digital circuit. You know what? I'll just make a bunch of them because we're going to be using a lot today. And then we need the pumps, obviously. What else do we need? Oh, we need another distillery. I forgot you need two for each tower. Oops, didn't throw any of that in there. This should be fine. I need one more. Which means I need one more motor. Which needs just more of those. Uh, it's so much micro crafting. I really should set up ME auto crafting as well. However, that is probably too much to do as a side quest today, to say the least. But that is our second distillation tower. Perfect. Also, I don't know why I'm down here. I want to be outside. What shit load do we have? Nice. 512 buckets already. And you're full. For some reason, this isn't filling up the way I thought it would. I assumed in all honesty that would work. However, it seems this does not work. So we do need to set up our setup fast. And we've only gone through four drills to get 510, or sorry, 520 buckets. We went through four drills. Can't complain, you know, pretty good. So the next steps in this guy, it does want fluid input and output hatch, both at the advanced level. It also wants five steel clean machine casings, and it'll give us 64 in return, which is actually super, super nice, I will say. So to make these guys, it's just stainless steel plates surrounded by a stainless steel gear. However, all of my stainless steel plates are still up here in a barrel, I believe. Yes, they all are. So I'll throw those inside here and we should be good to make a bunch of these ourselves. And then with this, obviously we'll make an input hat and an output hatch as well. And that should be quest complete. Perfect. So that gives us plenty of stuff. And shale oil is our first process, obviously. So if we right click on shale oil, there are three outputs, which means we need three output hatches just for this. So if I place on my distillation tower, say right here. Now, if I hold my wrench out, this guy will show you a three by three by two. Now, obviously that is not the only structure this guy can be. If you've ever played Greg Tech, you know how tall distillation towers can get. However, if you've never played Greg Tech, this I will show you. Oh, I want you to be off very much off okay so i want a fluid input hatch right here beside the distillation tower make it easy i want my fluid output hatch i believe this can be right on the bottom oh no it can't okay perfect so we want three fluid output hatches like so and then we want to set this guy to height three and that should be fine yes and we also do need an hv input or an mv input hatch so we'll stick one of these on the back as well bring our lovely wires over and then we just fill the center with stainless steel machine casings oh maybe not no you definitely do oh i use the wrong block but that should be a complete distillation tower all three of these fluid outputs are available and what i will do is lock them so with a fluid pipe we'll grab orange why not we'll do out here in there and this guy will start distilling automatically right away now we will lock this lock this and lock this so we're going to get helium at the bottom now i obviously want to keep the helium as long as possible so i'll grab our huge fluid tanks out and if i do something like this i connect these like so this should start filling up with helium yes but it is filling up upside down which i don't like these should connect we'll just do it like this for now fill up both nevertheless that is our helium taken care of now sulfuric crude oil and sulfuric naphtha are the next two sulfuric crude oil for now we're going to put into a tank and then we're going to avoid the rest because this is to make crude oil it also gives us sulfuric acid if reacted with hydrogen but we're already making crude oil at plenty so i will store a bit of it but then i'm going to avoid the rest for right now so i'll make myself a fluid trash can i'll do the same thing and i'm also going to avoid the excess of this so if pipes will interact with a higher priority first so if we set these guys to 10 this is the similar setup we done did down below we will do 10 on both of these and we will do negative 10 over here and this guy just for an output buffer i will also do negative 10 over here that just means if this guy fills up our other distillation process won't stop working however this is so much helium and so much sulfur crude oil space crude oil i'm not worried about but helium we should have plenty of enough for a long long time now obviously the next thing we want to process is sulfuric naphtha which i will store in a buffer tank for now a much larger buffer tank to say the least because i do not want to throw this out so if i do a four high one and then i can use the same orange fluid pipes and output and then we'll do the same thing we'll do 
transfer priority 10 and then minus 10 so that it all fills up here first. Now that is our sulfuric NAFTA online. And honestly, I should connect all of these up as high as possible, but it is for what it is this. Now, this isn't it, unfortunately. With our sulfuric NAFTA, the next thing we actually have to do is process it a slight bit further before we add it to a new distillation tower. So what we have to do with sulfuric NAFTA is actually chemically react it with some hydrogen. 12,000 millibuckets per 2,000 hydrogen, pretty good ratio, will give us NAFTA and sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid we're going to send right downstairs to our sulfuric sulfuric acid tank down below, the NAFTA we will be using for further processing. With this, all we have to do is add some steam, and obviously we already have plenty of steam, so that's not an issue. We'll just bring a steam pipe over and fill it with NAFTA, and this gives us steam cracked NAFTA. Now this is what we want, and then we put this inside a distillation tower, which will be nine high. However, to do that, we are going to need some machines, so I've already got them already made up here. Now, this chemical reactor here will be for chemically reacting you with you this electrolyzer up here is going to make us our hydrogen from water do i actually want the chem the one on the bottom i'll do electrolyzer on the bottom and then we can do a water tank right below it and we'll do something like that nice so this guy has water it will electrolyze eventually once it has power why don't you have power this guy has power is it because this guy is running out maybe i might need to do another line specifically to one of our storage banks because this might use too much power interesting i didn't think it would all things considered this guy's not even running yeah we shouldn't be over drawing power at the moment by any means but this guy seems to be empty so we'll do a small connection underground say right here oh we can't go through there i really should have made my basement one smaller we'll go around so with our storage unit right here I'm going to bring another one down this way. I don't know why I'm running it like this. It's actually stupid. And then with something like this, we should have power come out this side. Yes, perfect. And for some reason, you're still not getting power. Why? Maybe if I disconnect this, it'll get power. Why don't you want to get power? This cable has 162,000. Oh, it's not MV. Oh my goodness. Anyone probably could have told me that. Wow. Okay. We'll keep those configured or those beside each other anyway, so we can have power over here. But wow, 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 wow. Okay. That was so obvious. I just forgot I had destroyed it. So the MV went away. Do you have anything good for me? A portal charm? Anyways, then that never happened. This will electrolyze water. Hydrogen will do the same thing with. Out, out. Both of they are doing hydrogen. Of course they are. Out. Okay. Oxygen is going to be orange. We will take that over this way. Wait, do we need oxygen for anything in this setup? I can't remember. I don't think so. I don't believe so, no. And if we do, we'll worry about another time. But for now, and I'll get rid of that hydrogen for now. That is that done. And that'll give us sulfuric naphtha and sulfuric acid. Nafta, obviously we need to chemically react, so I will do a buffer tank for this guy. Perfect. And then sulfur, I will take from below. Oh wow, I got right to the basement on my first try. Whereabouts am I? Okay. So I need to go to the sulfur tank right over here. Whoops, a daisy. I forgot that was my ethylene. Okay, so we need to do sulfur downwards right here. We'll do sulfur down right here, I guess. Cool. Okay, so we need just need to go in a straight line. And for this, I will do hammer three by three. Now that should be going in. Yes. And we'll just go cover the hole upstairs. Yeah, now we're getting sulfuric acid downstairs as well. Now with our NAFTA, we can actually process this in a distillation tower. So same thing as before, we're going to want a distillation tower here. I will want an MV energy hatch. I want my fluid input hatch, and then I want my four output hatches. Now this guy needs to obviously go eight high, not nine high, just eight, because that's the height of how many fluid input hatches we need, not how many, like how high it can actually go, which is weird the way it counts it, but yes. So we just need fluid output hatch is going like so and what i'm going to do with these is i'm going to stick a huge fluid tank on each one of these and set all of these oh, set all of these to eject fluid and since each output is so low in theory because each one is split between each like thousand buckets of nafta that is made is split individually into smaller amounts of each eight fuels right so we should be fine just using a jumbo tank on each output for now as a buffer and then figure out what we have to do with it next however i should be able to bring a fluid thing like this do nafta out and this should by all means work you have eight output hatches shape is valid flashback nafta obviously we need to 
chemically react right 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 we have to crack it with steam like i knew that but i messed that up okay well we'll lose sixteen thousand buckets or six yeah 16 buckets because there's no way i can get that out actually oh, i guess i can do this there we go okay an extra storage for nafta to say the least now with this i can process this with steam in a chemical reactor i knew i had an extra chemical reactor for some reason i just forgot to actually use it and since steam cracked nafta is the only output we don't have to worry too much about this so we could do out and then in this guy will get nafta and then down below here i will do the same thing Thing. turn that off i will grab some steam which i luckily have right here so i'll grab some fluid pipes and that should react so that'll give us steam crack nafta at a pretty decent rate this will process it and it will go as high as efficiency three wow we're doing too well but yeah as you see these guys have such low outputs only like in the hundreds of millibuckets so that all of these should take a very very long time to fill up as buffer tanks and then we can eventually further process each one of them however that while slightly messy is a full distillation setup so you need a four high distill or sorry you need a three high distillation tower to process shale oil from stainless steel drills with that then you then process it into three different fluids for now all we're focusing on is nafta nafta what you have to do with is you have to combine the sulfuric nafta with hydrogen which you get from electrolyzing and then you get nafta with the nafta what you do is crack it with some steam once you get that you put that back into a distillation tower and then you get many many things so if you look you get methane acetylene ethylene propane butene benzene polyene and ethyl benzene now methane let's go over everything methane will allow you to make more acetylene once again you're getting acetylene from this so this is two ways to get acetylene acetylene will be used to make vinyl chloride in the future it also allows you to make hydrogen we're not going to use this recipe we're making vinyl chloride with hydrochloric acid we've made this before and then vinyl chloride will be allowed to make polyvinyl chloride which will be for processing unit boards and also our superconductor cables these are two big things also the advanced upgrades and high turbo upgrades really nice as well well, but the processing unit boards will allow us to make processing units and quantum circuit boards in the future. Next thing is ethylene. Ethylene we've already made before so this is the exact same usage. It will allow us to make polyethylene. So we already have a bunch of ethylene. We'll just combine both tanks. Next thing is propane. Now propane will be used to make acrylic acid with some oxygen and acrylic acid will make diethyl ether. It also makes acrylic glue but we don't need to worry about that. Diethyl ether will allow us to make boosted diesel which is the best fuel source for fluid fuels other than force infused fuels which is insane however force infused requires fortron yellow cake uranium and force gems this is a lot of stuff it requires 10,000 millibuckets of fortron to make 5,000 force infused but yeah we're most likely never going to do this recipe but boosted diesel is something that is pretty nice we will probably use next thing is butadine now butadine is used to make styrene butadine which will allow you to make styrene butadine rubber with chromium vest or lead similar to all the other recipes and this will allow you to make ram now it also allows you to make rubber sheets just by vacuum freezing it 200 millibuckets will give you 64 rubber sheets now we have our rubber farm so we don't need to ever worry about this recipe it also allows you to make assemblies for all the cables however once again auto crafting with me auto crafting and the rubber sheets themselves will be plenty fine never have to worry about that so butadine itself or sorry yeah butadine will be for starting butadine benzene will allow you to duplicate any dyes this little zero means this is never going to be used however it will make a dye in return so 25 millibuckets of butadine with any dye will duplicate it but the thing we want it for is to make ethyl benzene caprolactam is not going to be used at all in this pack i don't know why it's even included it could have been disabled never going to be used ethyl benzene is another byproduct so we'll get to that in just a second last one is toluene before ethyl benzene toluene allows you to make industrial tnt very similar to our f2b sky series where you made gelled toluene this allows you to make industrial tnt which will be used in the nuke processor or to make nukes and also in the implosion compressor and the last thing is ethyl benzene which allows you to make the styrene for the styrene butadine that you need which obviously goes back to making this so those are all the things we're going to be doing with this obviously we won't be focusing on all of them at all at once we will slowly progress through them as we need them but for now with these huge flow tanks we shouldn't ever have an issue with storage of our things and i could always pipe one out and add another jumbo tank just for extra processing if we run out of space but for now this is a full oil processing setup so i hope you guys enjoyed this smaller episode today it is simply just focusing on the oil processing eventually we'll 
we'll get to processing all of those chemicals on the side. In the next episode, what we'll do is focus on the quarry and the processing of all of the ores we get from it. So that means the plat line is coming up tomorrow. Now, any Greg Tech enjoys, the plat line is a lot simpler in modern industrialization than Greg Tech. So if you're not, that'll be a switch breeze to press us through. But with all that done next episode, the following episode, we should start getting into the EV age once we start processing this stuff right behind us as well. So I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, if you did, leave a like on the video. It means a lot. If you don't want to miss any future uploads, hit that subscribe button. It means a lot. And if you learned something or want to teach me something about one of my setups being slightly inefficient, which they probably are, just leave it in the comments below. I read them all and I do appreciate them. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.